Hello, this is the Pythonic Accountant, back with another fun video for you guys. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Python docx template library, which allows you to take a Word document file and turn it into a template that you can update with uh, updated values or words or whatnot. So uh, there's a lot of use cases that I see this for accounting, um, and the one we're going to show today is for a financial statement footnote. Uh, but you could also see it being used for an audit report or engagement letter or any other kind of letter uh, or you know word type of document that needs to have dynamically changing dates if you have something that's done you know quarterly or annually uh, where the actual dates and the amounts might change so for this example we grabbed the uh, note 6 uh, inventory footnote from Tesla's financial statements, and this is from the, I believe, the Q3 FY19 financials. And what we're going to do is this is the original note here. Um, I've already gone through and made a few updates to make it uh, work for the template as needed, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but basically, if you look here, you can see there's uh, a few things that would change from quarter to quarter or from year to year, but a lot of the footnote would likely stay the same. Uh, so you've got uh, current year, prior year, all the numbers here. Uh, you've got current year here and the amounts of this write down and then prior year here and the amounts of the write down. I guess technically you'd probably change the, uh, the month here, but I've left that out for this one just for now. So let's go ahead and load up our uh, libraries that we need. Uh, so before we even start there, you're gonna have to conda install the uh, docx TPL library. And so the actual way to do that is in your command prompt, type this in. I've already done it in mine, so it'll just say it's already installed. But this is what you would want to paste into your command prompt to install it. Um, next, we're going to load up our libraries. So we're going to do from docx tpl import docx templates. And then we're also going to need the Jinja2 uh, library and then import pandas. As PD. And note the Jinja 2 library actually comes with the uh, docx template library because it's a piece of it. Um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what the template file looks like once you actually add in the Jinja template pieces. So note 6 templates. And so what I've done here is let me throw this side by side. So I took the places that I wanted to replace, so 2019. And it's, it's a standard format of doing double curly braces and then a variable name and then double curly braces at the end. So when it goes and loads this template up, it reads this and says, oh, I see a double curly braces and there's the end of it. That means that the thing in the middle is what I have to render when I load up this template. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what happens if we just render a few of these things. So we're gonna take the current year in prior year, and we're going to ignore the rest of this stuff here um, and see if we can actually turn this template into a new file that replaces this current year and prior year piece uh, with the current year and prior year actual uh, dates. So let's go ahead and do this. So to load up the template, we do doc equals docx template, and then the name of the file, which is note 6 template. dot docx let's just verify that that should work and cool that works so then we have to create what's called the context and the context is what is a is a dictionary and it's a key value pairing where the key is the uh, name of the variable that we're replacing so cur underscore year and prior underscore year and then the value is what we're replacing it with so context equals year and we'll just for now do the same ones that we already have there prior year 2018 and then to render it we do doc.render and then we feed in the context and then doc.save note output one dot doc x and let's see if that works cool so let's take a look at our note output one that we just created and awesome. So what this did is it looked like it left all the pieces blank, 
that had <clears throat> the variables that we did not provide any data for. It just left it as nothing. Um, so these here, as well as the uh, you know numbers after the dollar signs. But it did give us the 2019, 2018 here, 2019, 2018 here. So that's great. Looks like it works. So let's continue on and see if we can fill in the rest of these. Now, instead of going and creating a big dictionary, I think I like the idea of having a separate Excel file where you can store the data that you would want to load up into your Word document. So I went ahead and created an Excel file uh, called Notes Data. And this Excel file is a very simple table that has basically three columns in it. I've got the, you know, which item I'm looking to uh, fill the value for. So you've got your kind of current year date, prior year date, and then you've got your individual pieces of the note. So uh, as you can see, you've got raw materials, work in process, finished goods, and you've got a current year and prior year version for each of those. And then this is the variable that correlates to the variable inside the template. So I just use CYR for current year raw materials. And the reason why I use a short name variable here, I usually prefer to use a longer variable that's easy to understand uh, what it relates to. But in this case, it makes the, the actual, you know, looking at the template looks kind of funny. So if I typed current year <laughs> raw materials or whatever, you know, that's not proper because you need underscores. But you can see it just makes the, the new rows get a little bit confusing. And I prefer to have it a lot neater and a lot closer to the final result uh, format wise. So what we've done here is I actually took the original values and uh, just populated them into this Excel template. I could replace this with anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, and, I, and I used a formula, a sum for the total line. and. I like that idea because in practice, I would always prefer to have my total automatically summed or even better, you could have it you know, keyed in and then do a way to calculate whether there's your sum validates against what the sum was so you don't have like a rounding error. But um, in this case, I've, I'm just gonna leave it here. And then I've got the uh, dollar amounts from the notes uh, below uh, keyed in here. So you can see I've got my, you know, where is it? 24 million, 113 million, and that is the 2413 there. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So to do this, uh, I'm going to have to load up that data frame into a variable I'm going to call note to data, p.read Excel notes data.xlsx. Cool. Uh, now we're going to create a new context variable. So the previous context variable was this dictionary here. Now we need a new context dictionary. So context equals dict zip. And this is just a shortcut to create a dictionary from two columns in a data frame. Uh, if you saw two videos prior to this, uh, I created a, a dictionary in the same way. So note data var and note data value. And let's just see what that looks like. Cool. So that's my context that I'm going to be loading up. So um, let's create this output and see what it looks like. Um, we're going to do, we're going to repeat this because we want to use the same template. And so we're going to do doc.render context. And we're going to output it to, let's call it output two. And let's see what that looks like. So output two. And this looks pretty darn close, uh, but if you've got that eagle eye like I like to think I do, uh, the thing I, no I noticed is a little bit different is you don't have commas in these numbers. So that's a little bit annoying because I, I, I like the format to be perfect. So it turns out there's actually a way that you can apply a custom filter within the template that you can have it change the data as it gets put into the template. And so this custom filter we're going to apply is going to add a comma to numbers that come in in the specific places that we want it to. So a couple steps that we have to do to do that is we create a function that is going to be able to be used in the template. And then we're going to have to load that up into our template environment. So we're going to create a function called comma. It's going to take a value. And then it's going to return a string format of that value with a comma. Then what we do is we're going to create a variable called Jinja environment. Jinja environment equals Jinja2.environment. 
and then Jinja environment.filters. And I'm gonna use just a one letter filter for this C. Again, that's gonna be added into our template and I like to keep it as short as possible so it doesn't make the formatting funny. And then this is gonna be equal to the comma function. So now we've got that loaded up and all we have to do is kind of recreate this with a couple of changes. I'm gonna change this to output three. And the other key thing you have to do is in the render, you actually have to add in the Jinja environments uh, variable that we added up here. So what this should do is create a node output three that will hopefully include commas. Uh oh, that did not work. Oh, okay. So what happened was we did everything we needed to except we forgot to update our templates. So let's go ahead and update our template. So uh, to apply a filter, you add a pipe and then the actual uh, name. So C is that filter and the pipe uh, creates it. So again, to make this look better, I'm gonna delete those spaces. Normally I'd like to keep them so it looks a little bit cleaner, but in this case, that's fine. And then we'll do it with these as well. And save that. And let's run this puppy again and see what happens. Let's take a look at note output three. And, oh no, what did we do wrong this time? Let's see. Let's see if we can figure this out. We'll go back to our template. Let's see. We did da, 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 da. This gave us. Hmm. Oh, I bet I did something funny with my quotation marks. That's probably what I did. Let's see. Yep, exactly what I thought. So I just turned this into a quote, but I needed to actually. <laughs> format it. So let's try this one more time. I'm going to exit out of here and recreate that. And let's see if this gives us what we want. There we go. Node output three. This looks very similar to, it actually should match exactly the original note. And now we've got a working template. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And please leave a comment if you have any feedback or suggestions on future videos. Thank you very much. Have a good one.